Okay, so welcome. This is the lecture. Um, this is the lecture from Maya 7. If you are still working on the Rubik's Cube, yes, definitely work on that. I'm just introducing both sets of the notes. I'm introducing the second set of notes that tomorrow is a work day for both assignments. If you get done with one, you can move on to the other. So yes, work on the Rubik's Cube if you're still doing that. But if you are done with that, the next set of notes that I'm going over today are Maya 7 about retopology. So as I mentioned on Tuesday, Maya 6 and Maya 7 are like one and a half sets of notes put together, or like in two sets, um, because there's a few or quite a few things and I don't want to, I didn't want to cover them all in one go. So we learned about merging and deleting vertices on the last one. So that's how we can mess with um, how many edges we have by getting rid of extras um, and merging um, any vertices that might need to be connected. So the concept that is helpful for is the concept of retopology. So that is what these notes are about. So that is generally the concept of redoing the um, the design of how your edges and vertices, how many components you have and how they're connected. So define retopology, editing your components down to the cleanest, most succinct arrangement to create the desired shape outcome. It's a fancy way of saying don't have extras and use um, only as many edges and vertices and faces that you need. Reducing the unnecessary clutter of edges, verts, faces you don't need. That's what I just said, literally. Professionally, this means to reduce a high poly sculpt down to a lesser low poly model. So for us, we're just trying to have the cleanest low poly work that we can. For pros, you might have like a sculpture from ZBrush that's like millions of polygons. And then so you would retopo it and then you would just reduce it by making a new lower quality version that uses far less faces to create it. So it's a way of, of uh, reducing um, the amount of load on things that you would need to render. So we talked about um, merge and delete edge vertex on the last set of notes. So today I'm gonna start with adding new edges and adding new faces. So the last one was about deleting edges and vertexes. This one's about adding new stuff. So I'm going to uh, take a look over here at the crate. And so you can see, which we'll get into this in a bit, but the top is already done on your crate, how you want it to look. Now, so you'll notice like there's these edges that go diagonal to, uh, oh, hold on one second, sorry. Okay, so we're talking about adding our own edges using multi-cut. So you can see I have these diagonal edges going to the corners here. So if I wanted to add those edges, I could use under my mesh tools menu, the multi-cut tool. So we have been adding edge loops, which add, you know, edges going all the way around your object, wherever able. Multi-cut is for adding edges anywhere you want on your object, one at a time. And also for just redesigning how vertices are connected to one another. So for example, I don't really want these here anymore but I still need these vertices connected to something. So I'm gonna click and drag and click and drag. And I'm you'll see I'm dragging past the vertices so that it locks onto that vert. Hit enter and multi-cut just added an edge. And so like the insert edge loop tool, it's a tool so it stays active until you click something else. So I'm still on my multi-cut, drag on this edge drag on this edge, enter, adds new edges. And so now I don't need these. I'll select them, edit mesh, delete edge and vertex. Boom, I just redesigned my geometry. I saved myself um, two triangles, the equivalent of one face. Now it might seem that I'm being nitpicky, like do, what are these like? It doesn't matter that it's like an extra 100 faces or whatever, Mr. Meyer, like who cares? Well, I want you to consider at a professional level, so you may have, you know, hundreds of different objects, unique objects being loaded by the game. 
you may be loading that single barrel 175 times in your load area. And so if each one of those barrels has an extra 100 faces, you've duplicated that extra load however many times you load in that barrel. And so that may, that's gonna cause, you know, render times to be increase and it may lead to lag. So every poly counts, every triangle counts at the pro level, which is why making clean geometry matters the most. I mean, obviously it should, you know, efficiency is, a, is something to strive for, but also the cleanliness of your geometry directly relates to how well it will run in the engine. So it's on both, both fronts. Now continuing from there, so if I've just shown you multi-cut under mesh tools, that's for creating new edges and vertices. So you can click and create multiple in a row, by the way, but that's not really relevant to today's assignment. So if that's adding new edges, what if you wanna add new faces? So append to polygon is um, sort of like a very specific type of extrude. And we'll talk about how those are related actually in a second. But append to polygon under mesh tools connects exposed border edges with a new face. Enter locks in your face. So if you take a look under mesh tools, append to polygon, it allows me to connect things and add new faces. So I'm actually going to bring this over here. It's easier to do it on this one. And so let's take a look at these. They're all just missing one face in between this. So if I click on this one, Click on this one, you'll see the pink face shows up. I hit enter, now it's locked in. G to do it again, and I'll fill these in. Enter. It will not, however, allow me to fix this per se. So I can connect these here to here, but obviously as you can see the cylinder part beneath it, you know, it doesn't follow the curved shape of the cylinder that I'm trying to fix. So it doesn't always fix everything. It's good for just filling in when you need to fill in, you know, single face. Boom, fill it in, easy. So again, our new tools for today, multi-cut, that's for adding new edges. Append to polygon, that's for adding new faces. Now, oh, before I talk about this, because I'm gonna come back to this at the end. So step snap. So one thing I forgot to mention about the multi-cut tool is that if I go under mesh tools and I go to multi-cut again, if you hold shift and I'm dragging along this edge, you'll see that it's snapping to every 10% of the edge's uh, length. So I can snap it to 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, boom. I could snap to 50 there, holding shift, snap to 50 there, snap to 50 there, snap to 50 here, hit enter. And now I know that this perfectly bisected this. I could also, for those of you wondering, do this here and then go over to here. Oh, hold on. And do this here. Oh, hold on, did I do it wrong? Hold on. Oh no, no, I didn't, I'm recording this, this is terrible. All right, let's try this again. So 50. There we go. Oh, why does it seem like it's angled? Weird. Um, so anyway, that's step snap. Now, I don't need these here. Let me delete those. So as I mentioned with append to polygon, it only gets one face, right? It only can connect the gaps between you know two faces that are separated by one face, and at least for this. So what if I wanted to fill one of these sections where there's a big old gap? Well. First of all, when you do the assignment here, so I'll do this. So the first step is gonna be to combine these. So now they will be one object again. So I would just take these edges that are bordering this hole, extrude them, so step two, extrude. 
Step three is switch to the move tool and then immediately reset the pivot point to one of the corners on the edges you extruded. That way, the next step you grab the center of the manipulator with V for snap to vertex held down, snap it down here. Now you got yourself a covering. And then you just need to use our merge from yesterday, or Tuesday rather, merge them up and now they're connected. So today is a lot of redoing, rebuilding this geometry. Hold on. Now it's starting to melt so it's drinkable. So let me restart this. All right. So that was append, but done manually with extrude. So again, extrude, switch to the move tool, switch your pivot point, snap those edges down to the point that you're trying to cover, and then merge the vertices and it'll seal the hole. So the last things on here are harden edge, soften edge, and reverse. So let's take a look at our Rubik's Cube, or not our Rubik's Cube, excuse me, the um, cylinder over here. So you can see how I can see the jagged edges where these two faces are connected. You can see the line in between them. So a couple of people, this has come up randomly throughout, but fixing your, um, oh, I, I had talked about this on the wagon actually. Fixing your normals. So if you want to make this so that this is no longer hard so that it looks smooth, you would select that edge, mesh, mesh display, soften edge. And then now it's going to look smooth. So I can select this edge, do it again. So typically you'll do this when you're done with doing your cylinder, but harden, soften. And then I don't know if you'll run into any reverses, but a reverse basically changes the direction the normal faces. The normal is the direction that is textured when you have it in a game engine. The game engine only renders one side of a polygon. So when you look through a polygon from its back face, the back side of the normal, you don't see anything unless you tell the game engine to render both sides of a polygon. So it's like a piece of paper where you can only see the piece of paper if you're looking at it from one side. Um, so again, you can see that normals are reversed when they are displayed as black and then you can see the texture display on the side that normal is facing. If you run into that at all, just fixing it using normals reverse. I don't think you should have any normal errors on this assignment. I didn't design it with those in mind and it shouldn't happen on accident anyway with the method we're following, but if it does, it's there and you do need to know it going forward anyway. So now let's talk about what we're doing. So I've given you two practice models that you are going to retopologize. So the first one, you're going to reconstruct this cylinder that I've broken apart. So please don't just slap a cylinder there because I'm going to check for that because people think that I'm not going to check for that. So now I've learned that I need to check. So please don't waste my time. Okay. So I have these two objects. They are originally part of the same object. So I'm going to go ahead and select both of these. And I'm just going to start, step one is just I'm going to combine this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do with these combined is switch into vertex mode and merge all of my verts. Cool. All right. Now, with all of these verts merged, I can safely assume all these points where the vertices are touching that they're welded. So that's good. And now I should be able to use my append to polygon tool. And just start filling all of the gaps on here where only a single face is missing. Because again, any of the ones with two or more faces, you're not going to be able to get the proper shape to follow this without using the extrude method. So again, just fill the single face gaps. 
using a pen to polygon. And I'm just using G to reuse my last tool. If this kind of thing happens, just hit enter and undo it. It's not a big deal. Don't worry about it. Just hit enter, lock in that crazy face, and then undo it. Okay, so I think, oh, there's one more. Two more, it looks like. Okay. So the next one. So now all of these gaps that are remaining need to be extruded from the border edges. So I'm going to take the border edges for this, select them. Whoops. And I'm going to extrude from here. So next thing I'm going to do, I've done my extrude, switch to my move tool, snap my pivot point to the corner. And then once my pivot point's set, hold V and actually snap the move tool up to this vertice. And then finally, I'll lock it in by selecting all the verts and running merge. Okay, let's keep going. So here, here, and here, select these, extrude, move tool, put the pivot point on the corner, move tool, just hold V, snap the pivot, merge. Extrude. Move tool, pivot point to the corner, snap to the bottom. Whoops, there we go. Vertex, merge. All right. Now you could just merge these all together at the end if you wanted, but I'm just trying to keep my order of operations clean for you folks. So move tool, snap it there, snap it there. All right, merge. Okay, so see here how my, woo, woo, almost knocked that over. So my cylinder, if I select it, it tells me I have 60 vertices. So 20, 20, and 20. That makes sense mathematically, right? It's a 20-sided cylinder with three loops around it, so I should have 60 vertices. That all maths out to me. So now what I can do, now that everything's all sealed up, and double-click my, aha, I found them. It's these two that don't work. I wish I knew why. Here, I wonder if I, so I'm gonna select these verts. No, they said they're connected. So see how, oh, it's also not looping through here. That's really weird. All right, I'm gonna change my th merge threshold to one hundredths merge. Okay, any chance that this works now? No. Okay, no longer part of the parameters to delete this edge loop. I, I mean, you guys can see, I don't know. They're merged, it says that they're all connected. So mathematically, the number of verts is accurate, so uh, these things happen. Can I go through and fix this? Sure. Should I? No. So moving on from that. So I have 60 vertices. So I'm gonna take my edge loop along the top here. Make sure it's just the edge loop along the top. And so to fill in my hole here, instead of trying to append across, I'm just gonna extrude. And then all I need to do, this was on the notes on Tuesday that we didn't cover. But just like you can merge, there's merge to center, which just brings everything to the center. 
So again, my order of operations there, double click the loop, extrude that edge loop, and then merge to center immediately, it's gonna close that hole. Same thing on the bottom, edge mode, select that loop, extrude, and then edit mesh, merge to center. Nice. So then the last thing is to soften these edges. Switch into edge mode, select all these edges, mesh display, soften edge to make look smooth. All right, if I switch into object mode, it's a nice smooth cylinder. Look at that, perfect. Hmm. Okay, so let's look at this part. This is a crate that was made in a similar fashion to the one that you folks made on um, Maya 2. So similar production method. Now what I've done is on the top I've demonstrated for you what each side should look like when we're done. So all these nice little corners. Saves us a few triangles and remember each tri every two triangles is one face. So if we are able to save ourselves faces, that means we're saving ourselves one or two, four, six triangles, etc. So triangles are the actual thing that are calculated in the game engine. So every face we save is saving us two triangles when we get into the game engine. So looking at this, for starters, each one of these planks needs to be combined in to the same object as the rest of the frame. And then from there, we're going to re-weld a bunch of the vertices so that they are connected onto the main object at like actually connected at the vertices. So for starters, edge mode, I'm gonna select these edges here and I'm going to delete edge vertex. So edit, delete edge vertex, which is again, command and duplicate or control duplicate or delete, I'm sorry. Command delete or control delete, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac. So I'll delete that, come to here. And so I'm just deleting these extra edges here on each of them before I combine these objects together. There's functionally no difference from me doing this after I combine them, but I figure for clarity's sake, it's better to just get these prepared before I combine them in. That's my reasoning. Okay, so object mode, select these objects, and let's combine the objects. Now again, just because they're combined, right now they are not contiguous and not connected. So if I double click these faces, I could just pull them right off of my object. Right, So we're working to make it towards this, where it's all part of this frame. All right, so I'm gonna start with this side. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these edges here, And I'm just doing them the side that I'm working on at a time, more or less, and the one connected to it. So that I don't get too ahead of myself. So I'm just gonna delete those edges. Great. So this face is like a big L shape now though, for some of these. So we're gonna come back and fix that. This one's a big, big, big shape. So let me go, uh, let me focus on the one I'm doing. So this one over here, Oh no, this is the one I'm doing. Okay, good. So starting with this, I'm gonna delete this face here. Boom, don't need it. So this face here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And what I wanna do, I don't wanna delete this one yet. And you might be thinking, oh, why would I do that? So mesh tools, append to polygon. I still need this edge being where it's located for me to append from here to here. And so again, you'll notice this face 
runs past the end of this, which means that it's not connected here at this edge, which is what I'm trying to solve for. So, excuse me, I'll do this on this side here. So you can see, this one still runs past this. So if I wanted, I could technically take this edge here and just move it away. So we're solving that issue is what we're doing. So that's why I'm gonna delete this face. And then I want to use my append to connect this edge to this edge here. And now those are connected. And so now to finish off this side, so I connect this outside here to this here, and it makes a big sort of goofy looking trapezoid. And then I just need to create the triangle that is this and this, so that side is done. And then on this side, you'll see I'll do the same thing. Here to here. Here to here. Okay, and so on the bottom, okay, cool. So the same thing is true down here. Again, you're just gonna delete this face and append. Delete this face and append. And then finally, append, 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 append. And then when you have all those done, you'll be able to fill in the triangles in here. Boom, done. So let's continue with this side. I'll do one more side. So again, I uh, don't need these, don't need these, don't need these, don't need these. All right, edit mesh, delete edge and vertex. Whoops. What did I select? Oh. Hold on. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Hmm, so there's only one vert there. Weird. Okay, well, we'll just do it manually then. It was trying to complain about which edges I was trying to delete. Wait, what is happening? I feel like it's selecting the... No, okay. I'm just paranoid. And then this one. Okay, let's try this again. Delete edge vertex. What is going on here? What am I, what am I selecting that it's not liking? This edge, this edge, delete, okay. This edge, this edge, delete, okay. This edge, this edge, delete. All right, just don't double click it, I guess. All right, cool, so now I got all this, now I can take this off. Delete, and then again, reappend here, Cross to here, enter, face mode, delete this, append here to here. Nope, I screwed up my face, undo. Append here, down to here, here to here, here to here. Whoops, see, forgot to delete an edge up here. 
See, the, ver the vertices left from edges around the corner and stuff will get in your way, so don't miss things like that. It's fine, though. It's just it interrupted my flow. So there we go. So now that will connect there. Fantastic. Triangle here. Triangle there. Boom. Okay, let's do this side. Delete this face here. Cool. Append the gap back in. Boom. Boom. Face mode again. Don't need that. Append. There to there. Now, here to here. Here to here. <clears throat> Here to there, 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 and then finally, there, there, there to there. Boom. Super clean geometry. All right. So thanks for watching. 